Well, welcome to a, another Lenten devotional, day 46, why Jesus came to die, to gather all his sheep from around the world. Now, uh, today I'm not going to do the reading here because there's a lot to talk about uh, in this section. And John Piper writes to us about how God has chosen people all around the world to bring into his family uh, of salvation and to create a new creation um, through Jesus Christ. So that means that today we are talking about predestination, election, and free will. And it was Luther who famously said that these questions are actually right at the center of theology and that a theology that is unable to answer these questions is a useless theology. So it's a shame that uh, in our churches today that these topics are actually the ones that are least addressed, right? Questions about predestination, election, God's sovereignty. And in regards to these topics, it was Karl Barth in the early 20th century that said that God's election, God's predestination is actually the greatest news of the gospel. So let's talk about that a little bit. What could it mean that God's choosing of us outside of our own free will, how could that be great news to us, right? So the first question I always get in these discussions is, well, how could God choose some people and not others? Why are some chosen? You know, things like this. Uh, this is the wrong way to approach this because now what we're trying to do is create some kind of theory in order to make what the Bible is telling us reasonable to ourselves. This is not the way to go about it. So this is the way to go about it. Uh, this is the entire point of the teaching uh, in the Bible is to say, ultimately, not uh, this is the reason why some people are chosen and this is the reason why some are not. There are many theories about this. But the point of it ultimately is to come to the conclusion and say, you are chosen. You are included. You are elect. God has chosen you now. So the question then is, okay, how did this happen? <laughs> right? I don't remember being chosen. Uh, when we talk about predestination, it always becomes a question of like, oh, you know, like this happened a long time ago before I was born, right? Because it's, it's predestination, it's something that happened before. Uh, no. Uh, Luther says very clearly in his writings, and this is really what makes him novel in this question, is that he says predestination happens to us now, it happens to us here in the present moment. And how does that happen? It happens when God sends a preacher. A preacher is not just a pastor. It can be anybody. But somebody that comes to you, oftentimes this person will have the appearance of a donkey, like as John Piper writes to, in today's reading, right? So it's not going to be somebody who's very articulate, good-looking, appealing, attractive, right? So if you look in scripture, God chooses somebody like Abraham, who's old. He's, at, he's beyond his prime. Uh, he chooses Cyrus, who's the enemy of Israel, right? So he chooses somebody who appears to be the wrong person. And this person comes to you, and his job now is to say, you are chosen in Jesus Christ, and he forgives you of all your sins. This is where the predestination, this is where the election now happens, right? Because without this word, uh, you would not know. There is no way to know. There is no secret or trick of figuring out uh, whether or not you are included. So today, uh, I want to tell you the joyful news. The good news of the gospel, you are chosen in Jesus Christ. Have a good day.